Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. It's Wednesday, January 4th, 2017. And here are some of today's trends in the news. On the market front, woo, happy days are here again. Everybody's up across the board, except Hang Sang hanging, yep, just a little bit lower. So what's going on? Boy, take that, look at that Nikkei up over 2%. Dow closes within 100 points of 20,000 after the Fed minutes are released. So the Fed minutes, they said that the uh, central bank is concerned about a strengthening dollar and that more fiscal stimulus could raise demand above sustainable levels. So you know what that means. Bullshit detected. Yeah, it's the same old stuff. So, if they raise interest rates, that dollar goes higher. And they're concerned about it going too high. So, the dollar went down today. And as interest rates go up, what happens? Well, you know what happens. Mortgage applications tanked 12% last week for two weeks early as rising interest rates Rates weighed, weighed on the markets. That's right. Meanwhile, Fiat, Chrysler, Ford Motors, and General Motors all reported better than expected auto sales for December, sending their stocks higher. Auto sales for December came in much stronger than expected, with a pace of 18.4 million versus an estimate of 17.7 million autos for the year. So, they were giving the stuff away, too. That's the other part of the story. There's an oversupply of automobiles. And there's that subprime auto loan crisis that's just fueling under the radar. So, remember now, consumer debt has gone way up. The debt they have on these automobiles, they got to pay back as their debt levels grow. So what's going to happen? Stay tuned. On the oil front, hey, it's another day. Oil goes up, oil goes down. Today it went up a little bit on the news. Oil companies likely drew down inventories in the final week of the year. You know why? For tax-related purposes. That's right. So, watch them go back up. And Kuwait said they're going to hold back. They're not going to produce more than they promised with that OPEC deal. They're going to hold back 131,000 barrels per day. So there you have it. Also reflecting a tighter market, traders expect top oil exporter Saudi Arabia to raise the official selling price for its crude to Asia in February. So the higher the price goes, more rigs come back on the market, and then the lower the price will go. We think it's near its top at around 60 bucks when it gets around there. And gold hits a four-week high as dollar retreats. Again, they're looking for the Fed not to raise those rates so quick now. So gold went up a little bit. But also, why is it going up? Because there are two markets, as we all know. There's the rigged market, the commodities market, with all these short sellers, naked shorts. Naked shorts, I'm not being politically correct now. Not those kind of shorts. Physical demand is up in China and India. It's quite strong at the moment. NAB's Lai said with the upcoming Chinese New Year, there is a seriously strong period for jewelry. And in India, the shortage of cash has prompted some safe haven buying from Indian consumers as a source of wealth. Yeah, no kidding. And that's why we keep talking about gold as a safe haven asset. Boop! They changed the game like that. Sorry, folks. Yeah, they folked us. That's right. Take your money away. And do dirty deals. And you're stuck with worthless cash. So, that's why we still see gold as a safe haven. And as well, all the profit, the problems going on with the stronger dollar and how it's going to affect them emerging markets that have $10 trillion worth of debt borrowed in dollars that they have to pay back as their currencies go lower. Hey, look what's going on with that Mexican currency, huh? Way down there. Good place to go vacation or maybe retire for a while. 
because things are going to get worse. Particularly with more and more jobs leaving Mexico and what Trump is doing to put tariffs back on and change the laws put in place that allowed the multinationals to rob us blind by using slave labor to manufacture their products, bring them back here and mark up the price. And people get tight when you talk about putting tariffs on it so we could have middle class jobs. Oh, speaking about getting tight, take a look at this. Whoa. No. In the name of humanity, we refuse to accept the fascist America. Yep. Donald Trump, the president-elect, has assembled a regime of grave danger. Millions of people in the U.S. and around the world are filled with deep anxiety, fear, and disgust. Who's this by? Refusefascism.org. Hey, where was your no with all the wars? How come you guys had locked you, huh? Where were you when Obama was slaughtering people? Not a peep from you, little boys. No, no, no. Let's see why Trump is fascist. And not a murderer like your Obama. Or you would have loved Hitlery with all that blood on her hands, man. Whew. When she wore red, it fit her perfectly. Yeah, Assad has to go. And what did she say when she saw that they killed uh, Muammar Gaddafi? We came, we saw, he died. He, <laughs> Yeah, you like that, don't you? That gets you off. Because I'm talking about tariffs and the positive things that Trump is doing, such as saying we shouldn't be toppling governments anymore. They should be returning jobs to the United States that you people supported the Clintons to take them away from us. And you have the nerve, the gall to put out something like this. And I call them the way I see them. But you don't. You're only cowards. Resistance, here's what these little clowns of nothing say. The presidency of Donald Trump is illegitimate. Donald Trump did not win the popular vote. Hey, cazzone, we got a thing called the Electoral College. Or maybe your mind can't go that far, huh? Which I'm all in favor of because it gives a representation rather than the East Coast and the West where all you liberal progressives who let them take you to war murder people and increase the defense budget and lie your way into office like Obama live. Like right up here in Woodstock, where you see all those Woodstockians with that quiche-eating grin and balsamic smile. How they love their murderers, if they're their murderers. The other guys are bad guys. Yep. He won the Electoral College, an institution set up in 1787 to protect slavery. Okay, that's your take on it, right? 1787, huh? When was the Constitution? That was a long time ago, too. But let's rip that up because you say so, and we could just find some little details in it. This is disgusting. Anyway, moving on to show you how they refuse to accent the positive because... Ford scraps plans for Mexico plant to put assembly line in Michigan. Oh, you don't like that, do you? Huh? And I don't want any more immigrants coming into America. Hey, you guys in this thing over here with all your names, open your doors to your house. Let them in. Feed them. Take care of them. Put them in your bedrooms. We have a lot of unemployed people here. We have the lowest labor force participation rate in the United States since the 1970s. When there was a Great Depression, you people that can't look so far or only want to look as far as you can, they didn't let people come in from anywhere. Until we get America back on its feet, close the borders or open the doors to your house and put your money where your mouth is. The whole list of you folks is right over there in that story. So, manufacturing finishes 2016 with the best growth in two years. Yep, but then when you look at the numbers, 
The industrial side of the economy remains weak. Federal Reserve data showed manufacturing output rose a meager 0.1%. Growth has been more robust in service industries, which account for the bulk of U.S. employment, and they pay nothing. They pay nothing hardly in the service industries because you people put in your low-life slimy Clintons. You like them. Oh, all you organic folks who wrote that? You love them GMOs, don't you, that Bill Clinton gave you, huh? Maybe you like that bovine growth hormones. No, I know what you like. You like that Bill Clinton deregulated the Federal Communications Act of 1996 of six corporations run the whole show. Those little crybabies putting out fake news. Yeah, those folks. Those are the ones you like. You like your murderers and thieves if they fit your lies and your lack of courage. Because we got some more news here, folks. This will really upset you. This will really upset you. Consumer confidence soared in December to its highest level since August 2001, according to the conference board, on the election of Donald Trump, because people see a more positive economic future. But you don't like the people he brings in. You call them fascists. I call you lowlifes. Little people who had locked jaw under Obama's murderous regime of eight years of war. Eight years of murdering people. Or, quote, I'm really good at killing people. In the book, Double Down, for all of the, those of you that can read past the lies that you want to see, trade hawk nomination points to more confrontational stance. Donald Trump has chosen a longtime advocate of greater protectionism as U.S. trade representative and another signal that his administration is poised to take the aggressive trade policies he advocated during the campaign. I'm fully committed to President Trump's mission to level the playing field for American workers and forge better trade policies, Mr. Lightseer said. Lighthizer, excuse me. Lighthizer's nomination drew a lukewarm response from at least one senior member of the party, I look forward to a vigorous discussion of Bob's trade philosophy and priorities, said Orrin Hatch, and it won't make a difference. Bob Lighthizer understands the harmful impact of unfairly traded imports on U.S. workers and business, said Sandy Levin, a Michigan Democrat who has long called for the U.S. to implement tougher trade rules. Ah, yes. When a Democrat does it, it's okay, isn't it? But I guess this is the kind of fascist that you people are talking about. You like when our jobs are stolen for us because you probably all got these, you know, easy, cushy jobs, you know? Yeah, you probably got a lot of dough under your hands and in your pockets. And you're the people that like fake news because you're the folks that love the Washington Post. The Washington Post, whose headline over the weekend was Russian Operation Hacked a Vermont Utility Showing Risks to U.S. Electoral Grid, Security Officials Say. Headline story. According to official assholes who spoke on the condition of anonymity, yeah, that not that great propaganda. Yeah, we can't say who we are because we got to make up a stinking story and we don't want to give our names. And we know that chills like you in the Washington Post will say what we want so the people can hate the Russians. Yeah, proper not. Remember that one from the Washington Post? You and the New York Times are going to fight for the place of the toilet paper of record. Can't give our names, we'll just put out the propaganda, but we're high official assholes. The discovery underscores the vulnerability of the nation's electoral grid, and it raises fears 
in the United States government that Russian government hackers are actively trying to penetrate the grid and carry out potential attacks. And it gets better. Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin, or it should be Shumlin, Democrat, called for federal officials to conduct a full and complete investigation in the incident and undertake remedies to ensure this never happens again. Oh yeah, take remedies, we'll fix it. Quote, Vermonters and all Americans should be both alarmed and outraged that one of the world's leading thugs, look at the language of this little jerk, Vladimir Putin has been attempting to hack our electrical grid, which we rely on to support our quality of life, economy, health, safety. This episode should highlight the urgent need for our federal government to vigorously pursue and put to an end this sort of Russian meddling. This is beyond hackers having an electronic joyride, said Senator Patrick Leahy. Yeah, what a Leahy. Lay down, you always do anyway. Lay down and bend over like you've been doing all your years in the Senate. That's a direct threat to Vermont, and we do not take it lightly. Oh, go take them out then if you don't take it lightly. No, you guys just shoot off your mouth and send other people to do your dirty work. Because when you put you all together, you don't have a pair of cojones the size of one mothball. But who else do we have here? Representative Peter Welch, Democrat Vermont, said the attack shows how rampant Russian hacking is. Quote, it's systemic, relentless, predatory. They'll hack Everywhere, even Vermont, in pursuit of opportunities to disrupt our country, we must remain vigilant, which is why I support President Obama's sanctions against Russia and its attacks on our country and what it stands for. Washington Post admits Russia didn't hack U.S. electoral, electoral grid. Russian government hackers do not appear to have targeted Vermont utility, say the people close to the investigation. This is propaganda at the highest level. They got the people to hate the Russians. Do you think most people don't know that it what didn't happen? Well, you got these slimy little boys, these little politicians putting out that hate. They should be brought on trial. They should be thrown out of the office for spreading Propaganda as dirty as they have. Chumlin, Welch, and Leahy. You're disgusting human beings. You do not deserve to be representing the people of Vermont or anywhere. Hey, maybe China. I think that would be a good one for you. Would you guys go to the George Goebbels School of Journalism? You little flunkies of nothing. This is Gerald Salenti. And that's some of today's trends in the news.